just to show uh, a few details about our work with plitidepsin. This is an antiviral that is currently in clinical trials, has been commercialized with the name of aplidin. So uh, aplidin, uh, plitidepsin, was identified by the pharmaceutical company Pharmamar in this uh, marine uh, organism, Aplidium albicans, and it's an anti-tumor agent that uh, was demonstrated is an inhibitor of the eukaryotic translation elongation factor one. So this molecule inhibits a key factor of the cell. It's a very abundant factor in the cell, uh, only uh, less abundant than uh, that actin. So it's really very abundant, and it's a key factor for protein synthesis. So in um, a summary of what we know about plitidepsin, in 2018, the Australian government approved the use of uh, plitidepsin and dexamethasone to treat some kind of myeloma. And curiously, at the beginning of the pandemic of SARS-CoV-2, uh, well, some scientists did a, a screening trying to uh, identify cellular proteins that interact with SARS-CoV-2 components, and they identified this elongation uh, factor that, well, interestingly, we already had an inhibitor, plitidepsin. So um, different laboratories work with the pharmaceutical company to study in vitro and in animal models uh, this compound and gave promising results. And the results of the phase one clinical trial has been published and currently the uh, phase three clinical trial is ongoing. Uh, well, uh, where plitidepsin could be acting? Well, the obvious thing to think is that it was blocking the synthesis of viral proteins because it blocks a, a factor of the cell that is important for protein synthesis. So independently of the mechanism of entry of SARS-CoV-2 in cells, this is what we have so far, as I mentioned before, remdesivir, molnupiravir, and irmatrelvir have been approved and they are inhibitors of the replication of the virus. Plitidepsin was placed here, uh, theoretically, uh, that it could be inhibiting the synthesis of proteins and then blocking viral morphogenesis. So we were doing studies uh, in collaboration with Dr. Nuria Izquierdo Luceros uh, at the IRSICASH in Barcelona. With her, we have done all the uh, studies with SARS-CoV-2. And the, uh, we could see that plitidepsin interferes uh, with the replication of all the different variants, including Omicron of SARS-CoV-2. And when we did electron microscopy, what we found is uh, the following. This is, again, cells infected without any antivirals. So we have the replication organelle, the DMVs, extracellular viruses, intracellular viruses. But when we add plitidepsin, there is absolutely nothing. The blockade is total. We have no DMVs, we have no viral particles. This happened at different doses of the drug, even at uh, 50 nanomolar, that is quite uh, low. We saw that the normal replication organelle and viral particles uh, disappear. There is no uh, replication of the virus. We also did immunocol. We detect uh, components of the virus, for example, uh, the nucleocapsid protein by immunocol with primary antibodies and secondary antibodies with colloidal gold particles. Here we see the strong signals of the SARS-CoV-2 nucleocapsid and with plitidepsin, uh, nothing at all. This also happened with other components such as the double-stranded RNA is an intermediate of the viral replication process. So now we can place plitidepsin also here, and no doubt that there is no viral morphogenesis, but also because plitidepsin is another inhibitor of the replication process because it blocks the assembly of the replication organelle of the virus. The good news is that um, some other pathogenic viruses use this elongation factor uh, in particular, uh, this uh, elongation factor has been identified as a component of complexes with the viral polymerase of other viruses in the replication organelles, for example, HIV, West Nile, papilloma. So we have hope uh, to, to be uh, handling one of the very uh, necessary broad spectrum antivirals to, to attack different viruses and to combat uh, potential outbreaks in the future. So what we do now in collaboration with uh, our, co or our other labs is to test lower concentrations and uh, recovery assays. That means to remove the track and see what happens. Is the virus dead or is able to come back? And we do this with a number of techniques, including proteomics and imaging. 
So I would like to just to finish this. We are electron microscopists, so we like uh, EM a lot. And I, I hope I have shown some examples that demonstrate that EM can tell us important details about how antivirals work in cells and, and sometimes when they fail, what's going on in cells. And this is the team uh, working in these projects. The Cell Structure Lab, um, uh, we